Hey there, Sharon here. Welcome back to our second video. Who knew that your Firestop coffee break training would end on such a cliffhanger? Okay, so maybe it's not a cliffhanger, but I posed that same question in a class one time and a guy got mad at me for saying that the one hour rated wall that he designed might not actually last for one hour. Remember when we talked about that little movie playing in your head? Well, I want you to get back to that again. Now, think about an apartment that you've lived in. In fact, let's go back to my college apartment. The wall that separated my room from my neighbor was designed to have a one hour fire rating. We've already established that expecting the wall to survive for one hour is a complete myth, but I need you to understand why. No one can tell you how long that wall will last for a couple different reasons. First, nobody can tell you where that wall is in relation to the fire. So it makes sense when we put it that way. If a one hour rated wall is in the corridor of an office building and there are a few non-rated walls that separate the fire from the rated wall, then the proximity of the fire will allow that wall to survive longer. Next thing that we can't answer is, is there some extra fuel load either on the fire side of the wall or even on the non-fire side of the wall? This could be equipment, furniture, or any array of things. Let me give you two examples from my college apartment. One of my neighbors was a hoarder, so there was definitely extra fuel load in that apartment. On the other side was a kid going to school to become a mechanic. He and his roommate had a car engine on their kitchen table with who knows what solvents and often a gallon jug of gasoline under the kitchen table. I think that's an extra fuel load in the event of a fire. There you have two real world scenarios where the fuel load would not match what's typically expected. So if there was a fire in that apartment, I am certain the wall would not survive for a full hour. If that's the case and a one hour wall makes no promise to survive for one hour, then why do they refer to the assemblies as one hour walls or two hour floors? Bear with me for a minute because this is important too. If you wanna have a safe building, you're gonna to build to the current codes. No one will argue that. To do that, the building code is gonna tell you that you have to have certain rated assemblies in certain locations. And if there are five different manufacturers of a given product, how do you know which one will provide the code required hourly rating? Well, that's easy. You have to be sure that the material is tested by a third party test lab. This helps you know that the products are all able to meet the same requirements and it helps you compare apples to apples, if you will. Let's say that you have a new material that you want to use in construction to create a one hour rated wall. Before you can market your product, it must be tested at ASTM E119 or UL263 so that you can tell people that your product meets the requirements of a one hour rated assembly. But what exactly does that take? Aha, we're about to get there. Now, you know that we can't control a real world fire, but we can control a test lab. When we're looking at five different materials that we could possibly use to build a one hour fire rated wall, once we know that all of them conform to the same fire test standards, we know that they all meet code and we can judge the materials on other criteria, such as ease of use, price, delivery, or a whole array of other criteria that might be important to your project. Our next topic of discussion will be our fire rated test and exactly what that entails. Now it might be a little bit more than you expect, unless you've heard this story before. And if you have, please bear with me because I might just present it in a way that helps you see it a little differently. Or maybe it just reminds you of something that you once knew, but you could use a little reminder on. So, when we're testing a fire rated assembly, we build the assembly, we give it time to cure, and then we put it on the furnace. For this discussion, let's assume we're testing a one hour fire rated gypsum wall. Let's say it's a U419 wall assembly. That means for a one hour rated wall, we'll have metal framing members and we have to be sure that the size and the gauge match whatever's called out in our UL listed detail. We'll have our framing member and then we'll have one layer of 5 8 Type-X drywall on either side of the studs. We have to follow the screw pattern and the taping requirements and everything that's called out in the detail. For example, does this detail require insulation? You have to review the wall detail to know for sure, but you can't just assume that the insulation is for temperature or acoustical value because in some cases it's a requirement of the fire test. What about the drywall you use? If the architect specifies this U419 wall and you can get a certain drywall brand for a different price, is it okay to use that cheaper drywall? Some of you are thinking, no way. You have to be sure that that's a type X drywall. You can't just use any old drywall. And if you're thinking that, congratulations, you're half right. Well, 
You're completely right that you have to use type X board for a fire rated wall. And if you want to know why, please check out the video on the difference between regular drywall and type X board. I have to admit, I had a little too much fun with that video, so I really hope you join me for it. But like I said, you're only half right. You see, different manufacturers have different elements in their products, so they're not interchangeable. You have to read the U419 wall assembly and be sure that the brand of drywall that you want to use is listed in that detail. If it's not listed, then you need to ask the manufacturer of the product that you want to use for the tested and listed detail they have for a one hour rated wall. Because what if that detail calls for mineral wool in the stud cavity? If you're using the U419 wall assembly, then you'll assume that it's not required, but you could be mistaken. I bring this up because every little element of your listed detail has the potential to impact the fire dynamics. You can't just swap out different brands without also swapping out the different tested and listed details. You're going to hear me repeat this as we go through different segments of our Firestop Coffee Break training. And I repeat things that are important. This is important. So do people switch out materials in the field and not review the paperwork? all the time. But this video series is not for those people. This is for the people who want to do it right, not cut corners. If you've made that mistake in the past and you've switched things out without checking, I'm not going to beat you up over that. I'm not going to tell you it's okay, but I promise I won't beat you up because we can't change the past. But as Maya Angelou says, you do the best you can until you know better and then you do better. This entire Firestop Coffee Break training and each and every piece of the series that you may join me with as our program grows, it's designed for those of you who want to do just that. You want to do better and you want to hold those around you accountable for doing better. Okay, so we were supposed to talk about how fire rated walls are tested and we're already at the end of this video. In the next video, we will dive right into that and I'll see you there for your next coffee break.